Hey, this is Gabe. Welcome back to another video. I have a piece of uh, marble from a coffee table that I moved and it broke in transit. And I'm using this two part lamb lock rocker gel epoxy mixed together equal parts. And I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom squeeze it together, clamp it, let that cure overnight. And then um, I have this sitting on top of my table saw. I have some cardboard underneath it and I have it shimmed and make sure it's dead flat, clean and so forth. And then um, when I take the clamps off, we'll come well, back. That's clamped up, that tabletop. And if we move in closer, you can see where it's wet. That epoxy is trying to glue dry cure that it's kind of a faint line all the way across to the edge so when that's cured and those clamps come off then we'll put the plywood inside that hole all right we are back and i got the clamps off and you can see how porous this marble is right here. On the front side, I didn't realize how porous this was because we bought this used and um, it was filled. So when you flip it over, you can see just how much filling was done. We'll get back to that later. But with the clamps off, um, you can see this piece of plywood that I cut. This is three quarter inch and um, I've got about a about a quarter inch uh, gap all the way around because of the epoxy on the inside, the squeeze out. So rather than trying to, to uh, cut all that stuff out, I just undersized that piece of plywood to fit. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue that plywood in place. So I have my caulk gun here, and in that I'm using this heavy duty construction adhesive. This is Ultimate One. I just picked this up at the local home center, and I'm just gonna squirt all that through there on applying liberally on both sides. Put that plywood down, and then I'm gonna weight it down. Okay, I got that Gorilla Glue all spread out. That was two tubes of Gorilla Glue. Okay, now we'll just let that set for about a week. All right, it's been about six days since I glued on the back piece of wood. I flipped the table over and I started filling this in right here. Um, I'm about to here on the table. I'm using this uh, lamb lock uh, stuff that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, part A, part B. You mix it 50-50, uh, and it came with a host of different colors, and uh, I'm not using these. Um, this was red, green, blue. I'm not gonna be using these at all. Those are in glass vials. And the ones I am going to be using, this is a white, there's a black, a beige, a brown, and a yellow. The brown and the yellow, uh, the yellow is really bright. So I won't be using that. A little bit of brown I'll use, uh, just a little bit of black, 
mainly white and then the beige and a lot of the chips that came out I saved the chips and then I ground those up I just used a hammer I cleaned my garage floor and I pounded it very gently cleaned up all the chips and ground them to a, or pounded them to a paste since I don't have a mortar and pestle I'm using cardboard to uh, to mix my stuff on now when you're using part A or part B, uh, this stuff really spreads quite uh, quick because since you're only doing 50% uh, ratio or one in one, uh, start with a little bit because a little really does go a long way. It's like the color. I'm gonna add a little bit of the the ground marble and I want a little bit of beige in there for some color oh that's a lot it's okay this was about $65 for this kit on Amazon now it may look like a lot right here or it doesn't look like a lot actually but when you add this to it that amount doubles in size so keep that in mind. And of course you're wearing gloves because this is a two-part epoxy. And I have my garage door, uh, main door partially cracked and my side door open for cross ventilation. It's always handy to keep some shop towels. Opposite end of the stick. Grab probably about that much amount. That's about maybe a little bit more. That's about right. Now, as soon as you start adding that hardener, that will start to set up. And this takes about a half an hour or so. First time I'm using it. But I practice with it a little bit to get the hang of it first. And that looks like it's about right as far as the color goes. And then you can add uh, variations of color. Like I've got a little bit of black here, so if I wanted to, I can take another little area. And I don't necessarily want to uh, mix black in that by itself, but it's good to have that off on the side. Because I can come back later and just sort of cap that off. And if you see some holes in the marble, like right here, I've got a couple of holes kind of hard to see now I didn't say in the, in the description or not in the description but I didn't say in the video or the earlier pictures that when I bought this it was in one piece so when I transported it I didn't know what I was doing because I moved this like a regular piece of furniture based on my limited experience of moving and I didn't realize that marble had to be transported on its uh, side so we got this around it was in uh, Orange County and I'm in Riverside County and it was almost a hundred miles or so in the back of my truck I had it on some carpet but it wasn't enough to cushion the ride so that when I got it home, it was in two pieces. Okay, I want a little bit of brown. So I'm just gonna tip this in there. This is a pop rivet. So I just wanna add a little bit of brown in there. And then I wanna clean that off.
a little bit of black. Uh, you can see how dark that gets. This is starting to go off already. It's starting to starting to set up. So I want to look for dark brown spots. Well, not much of that colored brown, so I need to lighten it up just a little bit. Take some of that and move it over here. Okay, so I'm just using the razor blade to scrape this loose. And I let it dry a little bit longer than normal. I found that if I leave it where it's tacky, that it um, it's not really dry underneath that well. And I have some gaps I need to go back in and fill. And you kind of get the idea. Okay, I'm making a little bit of headway. Um, as you can see, those lines are starting to blur. And then when I polish this out, it'll, it'll, uh, the lines will dissipate or disappear more. Right now, I've, uh, I've cut off all that stuff, and then I'm reapplying different layers of colors, mixing them up here, as you can see, like this. And then I'm just uh, applying them in areas that the colors match. Not right there because that doesn't really match, but that's okay. Just do that and we're good. So that right there is a little too, too light. So I want a little more beige and brown. Kind of blend that a little bit like that. And I'm just working my way down the whole slab. And then after about 20 minutes, I'll use a, a clean razor blade. I'll take this out and I'll put another one in. And then I'll just scrape that off. That's already starting to set. And you can see some of the color starting to blend in right there. Okay, as you can see, some of the colors are already in. That looks really good. You get the basic idea. So we'll just do that across the whole piece and then we'll come back. All right, I sanded that surface flush with 120 and then 220 uh, grit sandpaper. And you can see that there is a big difference from the middle to the sides of each side of that where it's, this is polished, this is polished. This is not, so the next thing we're going to do is polish that up. Uh, even mixing colors, I was able to blend the colors quite a bit, but that gap still shows. Uh, the dark edges of it is really showing up, even though I had it covered up. So I don't know about all that. But overall, I'm happy with the way the repair looks. I'm going to have stuff on top of the table anyway, so it won't be as noticeable. But it almost does look like veining in, um, in marble. 
So to polish this, I'm going to be using these uh, wet dry diamond discs that I bought years ago. Um, I bought these when I made my barbecue concrete countertops and I've kept them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use these. Uh, this is all pretty smooth. So I'm not gonna use these over here. Uh, this is 30, 50, 100, 200. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the 800. This is 1,000, and then this is 1,500. Okay, I've got my little angle grinder here. Squirt water bottle. I've got this all taped off so I won't get any splashing anywhere. And I want to get that nice and wet. Make sure you're properly grounded in a GFI outlet. Okay, so that was 800. All right, that was 800 grit, and that was about 15 minutes. So obviously I stopped the video because it's just the same thing all the way over. Now I switch to a thousand grit and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, you can see the cracks still, but it's not as prominent as it once was. Uh, some of the color match is pretty good, and some of it not quite so good. But even with the guy telling me that you could still see the crack even after the repair, so I'm not too worried about it. That looks pretty good. Once you get everything on the table, um, all that crack's going to be covered. About 90% of the crack will be covered. Or So um, anyway, now it's time to just put a little finish on it. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, the stuff I bought is called Granite Gold. I just got this at my local home center. Uh, like... It's under 15 bucks or something like that. And I'm going to put three coats of this stuff on. I'm just going to spray it on, let it sit for about three minutes, and then wipe it off. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow and then do another coat and then another coat the following day. Okay, after five days of applying this and um, about six coats of polish, uh, this still looks the same. It's still, it's still smooth but dull. It uh, hasn't gotten any better. So uh, I watched a video recently where someone used some car wax on their marble top and it came out brilliantly. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use um, probably just the uh, Ultimate Compound and then uh, the Granite Gold Polish on top uh, with this setup over here. Uh, you can see I've got plastic around the sides of my garage. I didn't have enough to top off the back. But um, anyway, that is the 
Oh, and I've got this uh, microfiber. I didn't want to go out and spend any more money, so I'm just wanted to use what I have and see how that works out. But from what I saw online, this looked like a good option. So this is the route I'm going to go with. Okay, here we go with Ultimate Compound first. Now I'm going to switch to Meguiar's Carnuba Wax. That looks a lot better already. So we'll see how good this does. Okay, right now I got a really good shine using that Meguiar's and you can kind of see the reflection, but I'm really happy with the way that looks. Now I'm going to switch to the granite gold polish. Okay, now I got a much more mirror gloss on there. It's kind of hard to tell with the light, but from my vantage point, it looks really good. So here's where that crack was. Goes from here all the way across. But if you're looking at it like this, it's really not too noticeable unless you really stop and look for it. So overall, I think this came out really good. And remember, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you really liked it, leave me a tip below. Buy me a cup of coffee. And uh, I hope this helps. And leave me a comment. Have a good day. Hey, this is Gabriel Castro. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. You can click on the link right here and subscribe. You can watch a video series right here or the latest video right here.